Well, welcome back to the final part of today's Shabbat service. We are about to um, partake in the Lord's Supper in Holy Communion. And I hope that you've had a chance to bring um, what you're going to use for Holy Communion with you. Um, we need to come to the table of the Lord with a proper attitude. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So it is very important that we're coming with a proper attitude and not just taking these elements, um, you know, as a piece of bread or cracker or matzah or wine or grape juice or whatever you're using um, as a ritual. This is not a ritual. We are doing this in remembrance of the Lord. So there are two ways someone could take the Lord's Supper. And Paul makes this clear to members of this church. And that would be us now as well as part of the church of Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. He makes it clean. Those who examine themselves before taking the supper, the ones who examine themselves before they partake of the supper, are the ones who are taking it in a worthy manner. For what are they examining themselves? For sin. Sin keeps us from a right relationship with the Lord. When we examine ourselves, we are to confess it. God has promised to forgive us and restore us to a proper fellowship with him. As I read in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those who are judged for not examining themselves, this group is made up of individuals um, in the ecclesia, in the church, who choose to come to church flippantly and not taking it seriously, not taking sin seriously, that may be plaguing their lives. And they might be people who have accepted Yeshua as their Lord and Savior, but are living an uncommitted life. They are those that we sometimes call Sunday Christians or Sunday believers. Um, those outside the church call these people hypocrites. This group is known um, as individuals who sit, soak, and sour in the pews. They're usually the ones who find fault in everything of the church. There are those who normally are not involved in daily Bible reading. These are many things that separate them from God. Um, this type of person should reflect and repent before taking the Lord's Supper. For the Lord will not tolerate this behavior. There are consequences. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the, with the world, the world that is not saved. So this is really important that we take this very, very seriously, because the Lord took this very seriously when he gave up his life for us. And as we look at the elements, th this, these are symbols. Um, they are not, of course, the body of Yeshua, and they are not his blood. Um, he demonstrated this service to the disciples and said, do this in remembrance of me. So as we do this, we are remembering what he did and the seriousness of what he did for us. That is what you need to take from this. Um, so the bread, the bread that we have, matzah, bread, cracker, um, the bread was to represent the body of, of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for our sins. He suffered many abuses on his way to the cross. His body was in rough shape on the cross. He suffered on the, on the cross for us, and he gave everything that he had for us because he loved us that much. 
and the cup was to represent the blood of Yeshua that he shed on the cross for our sins. The Bible says that without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Yeshua had to shed his blood for us. And as I mentioned before, the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament looked ahead to the time when Yeshua would shed his blood for the sins of the world. That was a type of shadow. And when Yeshua came, it was, it was, it, it, he gave everything for us. And this sacrifice was the final one needed to save the world. His blood was enough for all those who accept him as their personal savior. And Paul tells us that celebrating with these elements reminds the people of the church of Christ, Yeshua's sacrifice. We so often and so easily forget, we often complain about small sacrifices we must make, ignoring the incredible sacrifice that Yeshua did for us with his body and blood. And I'm going to read Psalm 51 today, um, and this is a perfect example of a repentant, contrite soul. When David, this was for the music director, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he went to Bathsheba, it's called Create in Me a Clean Heart. And David, David was heartbroken because he knew that he had sinned against God and he loved God with all of his heart. Be gracious to me, O God, according to your mercy, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was born in iniquity and in sin when my aunt, my mother had seen me. Surely you desire truth in the inner being. Make me know wisdom inwardly. Cleanse me with this stuff and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness so the bones you crush may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Take not your raw cockadash from me. And that's Holy Spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then will I teach transgressors, and your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guilt, O God. God of my salvation, then my tongue will sing for joy of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you would not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it, nor be pleased by burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a, are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. In your favor, do good to Zion. Build up the walls of Jerusalem, then you will delight in righteous sacrifices and whole burnt offerings, and bowls will be offered on your altar. That is Psalm 51. Would you bow your head in prayer with me now? Avina Malkino, our Father, our King, we come to this table as your guest resting only in the worthiness of your son as we look upon the emblems of our emblems of our savior's death may we remember why he died he died to cleanse and to heal to satisfy your righteousness and justice we remember his eternal love and boundless grace may we receive the assurance of forgiveness eternal life and the hope of glory as the bread and cup nourish our body. So may your indwelling Holy Spirit strengthen our soul until the day of Christ's appearance, when we will hunger and thirst no more and sit with him at his heavenly table. We thank you, Father God, for your giving of your son, your one and only son, that he died for us. 
You did not spare your son so that we might live. And we're not worthy. He was certainly worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise and all of the glory. And we thank you in the mighty, mighty, mighty name, precious name, the name above all names, most beautiful name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And say with me now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take the piece of bread or pepper or matzah. I use matzah because it is without yeast, and yeast is considered leaven. So um, when you want to do away with sin, you get the leaven out of your house. So matzah, the, the matzah is unleavened, and it does not have yeast in it. The Lord Yeshua on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This bread is a symbol of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, which was given for us. Take and eat. Now take the cup of grape juice or other juice that you have with you. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This cup is a symbol of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, through which we have the forgiveness of sin, because he redeemed us through his shed blood. Take and drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me now? Father God, we thank you. We thank you and we remember Yeshua, Jesus, and everything that he has sacrificed for us. We thank you. We thank you for your son. We thank you, Yeshua, for without you, we could not get to heaven. Without you, we would be eternally damned. What you did was an act of love. And we love you, Yeshua, for what you have done. And we will always do this in remembrance of you until you come. And we worship you. We adore you. We praise you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, Amen and Amen. May you walk in the light as he is in the light. May you have fellowship with one another for the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sin, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen and Amen. And this concludes our services today for Shabbat. We are going to bring Shabbat to a close and then do the Aaronic Blessing, which is also known as the Priestly Blessing. Um, it is a benediction, and I will we'll, uh, talk on that in just a moment. As Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold. God is my salvation. I will trust 
I will not be afraid. For the Lord Adonai is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the lights of fire. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who extinguishes, d distinguishes between holy and secular. Yes, the Lord does distinguish between holy and secular, what is of the world and in the world and not of him. He, he does know, and his eyes move about the world, seeking who is righteous. And that is actually in Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of Adonai range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are wholly his. And he knows if you've been born again and saved and you have acted foolishly in this matter, indeed, from now on, you will you will have wars is is the how that verse ended because um, he was a, a actually in that scenario. He was addressing the unholy and, and, and the things that were going on, the sin that was being going on in that day. So. Our Father can see all things at all times and be everywhere at all times. Um, he's amazing and he is our Father. There is no one greater than him. And he knows each and every person's heart and what's on their heart. So I pray that this was a blessing for you this week. And, and um, we're going to bring this to a close with the ironic blessing. The ironic blessing can be found in number six, verses 22 to 27, when, the, when Adonai said to Moses, Moses speak to Aaron and his sons. Um, he, what he was essentially doing is saying, gather Benaiah Israel, the children of Israel. I want to bless them and I want to put my name on them. So when you are saved, God writes his name on you. And the Holy Spirit seals you. He comes to live inside of you. And you're asking that. So the blessing is, um, I'm going to do it in Hebrew, and I'm going to do it in English. And the blessing is, is, is for you as, as, as part of the family of God. And when you're, you were born again into the family of God, you are part of, of that um, family. So the ironic and it's also the benediction given at every Christian church service and, and every Jewish um, service as well. So this is this is in both Jew, Judy, Ju, 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 ugh, I can't speak Judeo Christian um, services actually use this blessing. And traditionally, like I said, this was a blessing given only by the descendants of Aaron. Uh, which is also the tribe of Levi, as M Moses, in Hebrew, Moshe, uh, and his brother Aaron were both descendants of the tribe of Levi. This is this was Father God's blessing to Benaiah Israel to continue for all times and generations as Father God put his name on his children. And you, if you are a Gentile, who has come into the family of God through Yeshua, who made that possible for everyone. Uh, you are part of the wild olive branch. Um, so the wild and the natural branch are entitled to this blessing. And in Hebrew, it goes like this. Shalom. <speaking in Hebrew> The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, his peace and his shalom. Amen and amen. Shavuotov. 
Have a good week. And we will see you next week for Shabbat services and during the week for other activities. God bless each and every one of you. Shavua Tov.